Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally podcast and channel. I am so excited, as I always am, to meet uh, wonderful women who have read my book and felt some improvements. And Sarah here from the UK has very kindly agreed to come on and share her experience and how her body and what has uh, changed for her as a result of reading it. So Sarah, thank you so much for coming on. It's so wonderful to have you here. So it's lovely to meet you in person. Yeah, no, you too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm in such um, a totally different place now. I've still got a couple of issues which I'm actually looking to address right now, but it's because I didn't follow something up in your book, I have to say. That's why it's nevertheless very, very well. You, nevertheless. Well, you look amazing. You look fantastic. Oh, you. Look at us both in pink today, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on because I think... Uh, you know, when you reached out and said you'd had such improvement and things, it means so much. You know yourself when you're at that desperate stage, you're hanging on by a thread just to hear other women's stories. So it means so much to the listeners, you know. And no, people... I'm, I was in a really low place when, you know, when you, you called me a year and a half ago and I, I was just fighting off the tears. I just needed to just, I just needed to cry and cry and cry. And I, I was at the point where I didn't see the point in continuing to live life because you feel so yeah. unwell. If you're feeling that unwell every day, how can you carry on? Like, what's the point to be on the planet? You know, there's no point being here because you're so unwell. And so, yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. Oh, my, my pleasure. And I, I remember that call like it was yesterday because I remember thinking, I've been there. I've been at that point where you literally are questioning. I can't go on like this. What is the point? Yeah. And you know, you're very welcome. I'm really happy to be here and thank you for your book because it's enabled me to be here and tell my story and show how you can actually have a life, which is amazing because at yeah. some points it feels literally like you're literally just bedridden and it's just, it's terrible. It's, it's, ter it's such a horrible place to be. So thank you, Wendy. <laughs> oh, well, my pleasure, because I, I think I remember, I, as, just as we were speaking there a couple of minutes ago, I remember distinctly your application coming in. And what a really, you know, you're in a really bad place. You know, you were literally, I think, questioning. I think I ended up calling you because I was so worried about the, what I read, the tone of what came through. I felt that you were really at your wit's end. Perhaps you could start there and, and share. I think that was about a year and a half ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a year and a half ago. So if I, um, because what had started to happen again was everything that I'd suffered my whole life. Um, and it went away age 24. I had a, a surgery um, age 24 and I'd become quite well. And you know, when you've suffered so much your whole life and then you start to feel unwell again and it, it's the scariest feeling because you just don't want that to happen. And um, I was I was at my wits end. I was in a really, really bad place. Um, so, I mean, if I just start um, from my beginning, which is... I'm going to say, start from that bad place, explain it, because not only is this great therapy, but you mm. know that who, as you're describing it, I know what you're going through. And the women that are listening will understand. And I think what's very common for us is we brush over the pain mm. because we're those sort of stoic type of women anyway. We kind of go, oh, you know, we just had this and this. But actually you know, try and describe what you've suffered because equally I want you to celebrate how far you've come as well. Mm. Well, I mean, I would compare it to, um, in inverted commas, a normal person who has a really, really severe cold or even flu where you feel like that 
every day and your body is aching my legs have always hurt me my whole life and um, like head they feel heavy they don't anymore but they would feel heavy and they would just ache and ache and ache let alone the pain in your stomach in your back and it's the feeling of unwellness where you just don't you, you can't function you feel like you're drowning you just feel that you're drowning and you are trying to take breath to stay alive um and it's just trying to get through the day is it's horrible it's absolutely horrible i mean at that point i was in a particular job that wasn't very good for me i resigned from the job um which was one of the nicest days in my life it was so nice it was so stressful and oh the amount of work they were putting on you as well it was just so much to take on and my stress levels were through the roof um at that point because of the job and um I, I mean, even in, during that job, I was at work and I just fainted. I started vomiting everywhere and I had two women had to take me home and I just couldn't even walk. They had to like try and lift me and I was just so unwell. And that was just the vomiting and collapsing was just felt all right because I felt so ill every day anyway. But on the outside, what I've always been told by everybody is you look so well and even at university um, I finally got my diagnosis when I was at university and um, I had to go for a meeting with the head of faculty and he must have had somebody in his family who had endometriosis because he said to me why didn't you tell me and I was just like well I knew I've known there's something wrong with me I, I'd had by then it was my second surgery and I'd already had surgery age 18 where they told me there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing there just go and live your life um and I said to him, I didn't know, I didn't have a name, I couldn't call it anything, but he said, I wish you told me, because would you believe other students went and complained to the faculty about me, because I was never at university, and I was still allowed to do all the um, exams, and I'd still do quite well, and they just hated it, so they actually went and complained to head of faculty, why does Sarah not have to come to uh, uni, but she still gets to get the degree? Well, it wasn't my choice. I would have been there if I wanted, if I could. I really wanted to be. It was a horrible to experience to have that. Uh, yeah, I was so ill and always having to answer for why I wasn't at this, that and the other and why I was so lazy. It, it really is not laziness. If anything, women with endometriosis are very driven and we fight through Hence so Hence why much I've created pain. medals, you see? This is why medals oh. are my endoboss alumni yeah. who do my programs because it's <laughs> in battle every day. No, it is. So it really is. Winning the war. Gosh, mm. so to have that put upon you at university must have been awful. Mm. I mean, the fact I even got to uni was a miracle, quite frankly, because two weeks, I, I was, um, not two weeks, sorry, I was two years late to go into university because I was just in hospital constantly i was being investigated obviously i i was in gynecology and if i wasn't in gynecology i was being investigated for ibs and if it wasn't that my knee would swell randomly i think it was all the inflammation in the body that i couldn't even get clothes over my knee because it was my trousers couldn't even go on because it, it was so swollen and if i wasn't there doing that i was there for a dislocated jaw and i now know it's through grinding my teeth severely while I slept which I don't even have canines now I don't eat meat and it's a good job I don't because my teeth are literally just like flat um, and it's through so much grinding and it's because it was quite that's okay um it was just quite traumatic my childhood unfortunately which I think has led to all of you know the, the health the way it is um now uh, so yeah it's it's been a, a journey to say the least so um, yeah, so you've had all these surgeries but I mean it sounds like so what age were you when you had your first surgery I was 18 but I'd already been in admitted to hospital when I was about um seven years old nobody knew what was wrong with me I was just always just unwell and I was there for a few days and nights and yeah test after test after test and no you're fine go home um the same you know sort of thing that many people have suffered um so i've had four surgeries and after my first surgery i was told and i've read this for so many poor women on different you know platforms where they're in despair and i totally understand because after my first surgery i woke up um, and i was 18 and they said to me we found we haven't found anything there's nothing wrong with you you can go home and just carry on and I was I didn't want there to be a problem but what I wanted was an answer so that I could do something about it and just be well like everybody else um so 
it, it's my first surgery was a waste of time and second surgery was amazing um but i was on i just happened to be on private health care at that time and i woke up and the gynecologist said to me i don't know how you've been living a normal day-to-day -day life she said i found so much endometriosis everywhere and she just was flabbergasted by it and i trusted her so much because i i felt so well i'd never felt so well in my life and she then suggested i went on the zolidex um chemotherapy injection and go on the pill continuously I'd fought against going on the pill. My gut always told me not to do this, but I trusted her because I thought she's made me so well after this surgery. The first surgery went so terribly. And so I listened to what she said and I did it. And I'm so regretful for going down that path now um, for numerous reasons. Um, but then I had a third surgery because I'd, I met my wonderful husband, I was about 25. It was a good time because I was really well, so it was nice. We could go out and do lots of normal things that people do. And he's been the best thing. He's the best thing in my life. I'm, I feel so blessed to have him. He's so kind and he's gentle and he's caring. He's taught me about peace and I feel loved and I feel safe and all this, these wonderful things that I'd never experienced before. And it was kind of like self-sabotage. I was working so hard. I, it's like um, I was in a state of calm being with him that I, I didn't know how to live that way. And so it felt really weird. And I was just like, oh, you know, I've got to do something to do physically. So I was working six day weeks with very long days, very, very long days and pushing myself and doing property renovations while I was working a couple of jobs as well at the same time. And he would always ask me to cut down and just stop. You don't need to do this. And I'd push myself in gym to ridiculous extremes. And um, I've now learned because of your book about self-care and how to treat your body properly. And through doing I had to get myself to such a bad place, unfortunately, I just didn't know any difference. So I had to have a third surgery, same gynecologist, but unfortunately it wasn't on private healthcare at that time because I didn't know, I, th I thought oh, I'll take a break from private healthcare and go back on it. I didn't know you can't go back on it for an existing condition. So I was like, oh no. And um, so after that surgery, I was so ill. I don't know what happened in that surgery, but I was so unwell after that. and that's when I had to start the new job six weeks later. And so I, I had the six weeks recovery, but I need, I felt like I needed another month at least. I was just so unwell. And um, yeah, I had that third surgery. Everything just was getting worse and worse. But what my body was always doing, it was screaming at me to come off that pill. And so the gynecologist said, stay on the pill the whole year. Don't have any periods. But I knew I just had to come off it. So I'd start having about Four, and I know they're not real periods. I know they're not real bleeds, but I'd have four period periods um, in the year. And when I would come off that pill, I felt so good. I was like, I just need to be off this pill, but I was so scared to do it. Yeah. Um, and then everything just carried on getting worse and worse again. And it was a stress. I was just putting myself under so much unnecessary stress. So then I had my fourth surgery with endometriosis specialists this time. So I was really confident about that surgery. And I, uh, it was about six weeks after the surgery and I was still having the same I'd, pains. I'd come off the, all the tramadol and everything else. All the same pains were still there. And I voiced it to everybody. And of course, everybody was saying, oh, you know, you need time, but we know our bodies. I knew this is the exact same pain. And so when I went to see them in the follow-up, I said, where do we go from here? I'm sitting here in pain. I'm in agony still, you know, my back because I've got endometriosis in the pouch of Douglas and the ovaries and they were stuck to the you know uterus wall and everything and they just said well the coil let's just go on the coil and take keep taking your tramadol pregamalin you know garbapentin my body can't take all of that I you know I was taking it after the surgery and I was like a zombie every day I couldn't go and you know do a job and be in the real world like that so I walked out of the office and I just thought, you know what, um, I've got nothing to lose now. I'm not, I, my body knew I couldn't go on the coil. I just go on the coil. I couldn't have the coil. I just knew I was, and I, it, I just know it's not for me. Like I knew the pill wasn't for me. Like I knew the Zolidex wasn't for me because I had a second lot of Zolidex while I was waiting 
for the fourth surgery as well. And that was just terrible. I'd lost so much hair um, and I just very ill, just terrible. It gave temporary relief, but then the minute you're not on it, you can't be on it long term. You've got all the bone, you know, density implications and stuff like that. Then um, everything just comes back as, as normal. So I started researching on the internet, any other way to deal with endometriosis. And um, I found out about Ayurvedic medicine and because I was looking for a, a practitioner that I could work with, but I couldn't find anybody. There was nobody around in the area. So the Ayurvedic um, Institute just happens to be really local um, to me. So I thought, let me go there. And they gave me lots of powders and things like that. And they helped so much with the oils on my stomach and that was the first time I ever spoke about my childhood I, I opened up for the first time because I thought you know what I'm going to be in a wheelchair soon if I don't do something about this because I could barely walk I was in so much agony so I just thought I'm just gonna you know speak my truth and it's it, it was very it's embarrassing I feel embarrassed as an adult now speaking about my childhood because it feels oh, like it's my it. fault no no no, no, no. You know I know. of course but you feel like people are going to judge you um for it and because it, it's unfortunately it was my reality but it's not now and I've made so many changes oh my gosh I mean changes but um yeah the, the oils they gave me for my stomach it was they said it was better than castor oil and I believe them because it it was really really helpful and I did like a massage for three consecutive days it's called the punch of karma um and it was three hour massage for three consecutive days and I felt it was taught me about how much tension I had in my body and um, because I was just constantly like this and um I realized though other things weren't working quite as well as I'd hoped so I carried on my research and then I found your book and I was like you know what get the book read it see what happens and as I was reading your book um I was just like oh my gosh this is so good I was literally like uh, hypnotized by it because I could really relate to everything you were talking about in the book mm. and I read it within like a day or two and I was like right I'm going back to this book so I reread re the book and I started underlining everything so it's just graffitied on literally um, mm. from everything that I knew I needed to start applying to myself and I got um, some A4 pieces of paper and I made a whole endometriosis you know to conquer my endometriosis list and I did every single thing from your book apart from one which I'm realizing now I completely forgot about that and the only way I've literally started to remember about this is through hearing some other podcasts and I'm thinking oh I still have little symptoms here and there which I don't think is endometriosis I think it's other things like potentially SIBO I'm not sure I'm going to start all the investigations now and um yeah, the book, I followed it to a T. I'm the kind of person that I just, I'm, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I was at such rock bottom, I just didn't care. Yeah. And I just got every single thing that you said, everything you suggested, literally. Um, and I even tried the myofacial massage, but I couldn't find a person who did it properly. But I, did, I just did all these things. And I... Um, it's, it was just the, it was about three or four months later my husband and I took a, like a, a nice little it was a very short trip and I was so scared to do anything to, to go on this trip was the scariest thing because I know how ill I can get yeah. and so it I remember being um in this particular country and it was like tears starting to go down my face as I was walking through it because I was like, oh my God, life is so good. Life is so nice. It can be such a beautiful thing, but I've been in such a bad, I'd, I'd been in such a bad place for such a long time that we couldn't even do anything. I was every weekend, my poor husband as well, he suffered greatly um, through my bad health, just meaning, you know, in bed all weekend, just to try and get the energy to go to work for the working week. And so we really suffered sort of socially for quite a long time. And having this trip was the most phenomenal thing. And I, I just felt so free and I was just like oh my gosh I can go on a trip this is phenomenal um so yeah I'm in such a great place now I never dreamed I could be and it's funny because as I've gotten older I'm you know when you get older you're supposed to feel not great I'm feeling the best I've ever felt and from my whole life I've just literally 
suffered so badly my whole life and my periods used to be sorry if it's going to get a bit graphic no that's fine i think people on this podcast are you (laughs) want to hear this stuff you know (laughs) they used to be seven to ten days and within a couple of hours my sanitary towel would be saturated with blood literally from top to bottom I'd have blood clots the size of two pound coins every single day and I'd literally be in school and I could feel it all these clots coming out disgusting now my periods because of your book are two to three days long (laughs) they are so light sometimes like um two of the days they're very light one of the days light to medium where before they used to be medium to sorry and severely heavy to what I don't even know what the category would fall Sat- into saturation yeah <laughs> saturation literally um and I'm fine like an ovulation I have a tiny notion that I, I know when it's ovulation there's a little bit of pain every now and then um but my life is phenomenal and you know my husband will be like let's go here and I'll be like let's go instead of I can't I can't I'm so sorry so yeah it's it's absolutely amazing it's absolutely amazing um I can't recommend it enough you know I wish I could turn back the clock to think that I've been cut open four times you know when I think about having this surgery again if I ever had to Oh, the anxiety just oh, is that pain oh, it's just horrible it's just horrible I just wish that so many young girls can hear this and make a change in their life and understand that I mean I'm, I'm off western medicine completely I don't I don't go to the doctor I don't anything and even my immune system is a lot better than it used to be. I used to be so ill all the time. I used to catch anything that was going. And now I'm, I'll get maybe, I might not even get a cold in the winter. Maybe the wow. tiniest. Yeah, it's amazing. Whereas before I'd be in a room, a massive room, and one person would cough. I'd have it for like two months. I'd just be so ill. I got the stomach flu every year, most of my life. Um, and I haven't had it now for last couple of years it's, it's it's like a totally different lease of life it's amazing so thank you for your book wendy and thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with everybody it's so phenomenal so phenomenal oh, well thank you so much for sharing that and it's my pleasure and that's why i know when i was ill bedridden totally debilitated i'm like i have to you know document when i get well everything that works for me so women don't have to suffer and even as you were talking about young girls it gives me goosebumps because we know what we've gone through. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? Quite old, 37. <laughs> or how young are you? Let's see, how young are you? So that's that's almost 20 years, you know, that you have. Oh, no, yeah, more. And I mean, I was 33 years. So, you know, the very fact that you're saying that, I mean, my daughter's uh, 27. She's never had to, she was showing early signs, you know, mm. and she won't have to do that anymore. You know, she has zero pain, nothing. Yeah no clots, nothing, no pain, no cysts, no breast Mm. pain, leg pain. So it's phenomenal with what you've done. And, you know, well done you for having that strength of character to to go online and to search and to to commit to yourself in that way. And and what was it about the book that that you said that you devoured it in a couple of days? What was it about the book that you felt that you connected to in, in so many ways? Well, reading your story in the first few chapters was really good and just seeing the struggles that you've gone through because I've gone through severe struggles as well just to get myself referred for my second surgery and I had private health care the doctor refused to refer me and I had to get quite upset and emotional and shout at him and say I'm not walking out of here but you know he refused 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 um I'm not literally walking out of here until you refer me because and he was like oh but you've already had a surgery and there's nothing wrong with you you know you've got some period pain have a child you know the classic the classic nonsense and yeah being laughed out of the gynecologist's office I was age 15 being you know my first investigations for it and they all I asked for a hysterectomy you know looking back now it's quite a severe but the fact I'm asking for it have a think I'm in that much pain how desperate you were yeah burst out laughing so it was being able to connect with your story um and then it was all of your suggestions um so it was understanding that this person gets what i'm going through and to me that's really important you can't write about you can but 
I well, well, that's the thing. There's lots of books out there now. There's a yeah. lot of books by doctors. Yeah, but there aren't many at all of people who have actually put it into remission themselves. Exactly, the journey, isn't it? And that's why I exactly. was like, it was a labor of love and like you know, giving birth, you know, producing this book. But it was like so important to me because, as you say, I don't want women to have to go through what I went through, mm. and that's why it means yeah. so much to me. And I know the listeners that you're you're on here today, sharing your story because we know if we've gone, if we've walked that pathway, and it's been hard, just like you saying that tears rolling down your face when you're we're able to travel and think, oh my goodness, mm-hmm. is this what life's supposed to be like? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're not meant to suffer. No, I know it's unbelievable what people have to go through, and so many. You know, if I speak to people sort of in that age category, like teenage years, and they mention they've got problems with their periods, and they say, "Of course, guess what? They're put on the pill." And I'm just like, "Oh, I just don't please. I just beg you not to do that." And they just don't understand. It's what the doctor says, so I understand they trust that. I used to too, you know. Um, I'm not saying doctors are wrong. I'm simply saying that they don't understand endometriosis to the extent because the obviously some people have to go through it. And I mean, I think it's starting to get better. I think people are starting to see things a lot, you know, a lot more research is going into it. And I think it's already been discussed in schools, which is amazing. I think it is. And I think, I mean, doctors themselves only get two weeks in gynecology and training. Uh, You know, my my daughter's friend was training as a doctor and I was like, so what do you know about uh, Mm. endometriosis? What do you know about uh, period pains? Because pain with a period is not normal. Mm. But what, what we've had through our ancestral line is from granny and great granny and mum is that oh that's just part of being a woman but it's not no and I'm hoping to get into schools in time so I can share you know Mm. and even just changing one thing even just Mm. moving and swapping out wheat can have a profound impact on that Mm. absolutely I think what I'm hearing from you is that you really have taken back power and control of your body you've really Mm. not only listened to your instincts but you're kind of like well there's actually something that I can do here now no definitely and this is the thing I did have to get to rock bottom because I thought western medicine was the way to go of course I didn't think there was anything else yeah yeah no absolutely but I I was at absolute rock bottom and you're at that point where well they can't suggest anything else I'm this ill let me just and then I took myself off the pill and I started taking everything you suggested straight away I didn't even I was fine just absolutely fine I couldn't believe it and I it was amazing it was just amazing it's the, f- the first period wasn't great I remember feeling quite just not right but that was just the rush of hormones off you know my natural hormones starting to come back yeah. but yeah no the book I mean it's still in my bedside table it's like my bible I'm not even joking um <laughs> I wanted to lend it to my sister but I couldn't um because I just need it. I can't like take it out of my bedside table. Literally, it's just there. It's like a comfort that, that if I ever feel I'm going to get ill again, I just will reference the book, literally. But I, I haven't felt that way at all. Amazing. So, yeah, no, absolutely phenomenal. And I really hope that um, any young girls, I don't know if they'll find the podcast, but if they can find this and realise, oh, if I could go back and do it all again, the, the trauma my body has gone through. Oh my God. I, I wish I could go back and do it again. I really do. But well, I'm a great believer that we, everything that's happened to us up until this point has been part of our training for a greater purpose. So yeah. maybe this, all that horribleness is for a greater purpose for you up, up the road. So how would you describe your body now? So we've heard how much pain and suffering, surgeries, literally, you know, so how is your body now? Describe it for people who are listening. I mean, it's great to hear about your periods being like two or three days, which is yeah. amazing and so light, but you know, do you have more energy and things now? Yeah, or- yeah. I just, I know it sounds silly, but to other people it sounds silly, but you don't sound, I feel well. I feel, so I feel like I've got my brain back. Um, all that fog, all that feeling really weird in your head. I don't feel like that at all. I just feel completely present. I feel that I'm myself. Um, I yeah as I said I don't catch the things like I used to I used to catch things so badly and now when winter comes I don't dread it and um, like I used to be like oh god like please I mean I contemplated wearing a mask in public I'm not even joking I, I just was always so ill I actually contemplated that but I just thought oh, it's not going to be accepted but it will now so <laughs> I, can actually, no, exactly. my mask. <laughs> I don't need to um so yeah I, just, I feel well and my energy totally 
yeah totally different it's that hormone imbalance and I remember at one point being in the GP and another GP who was actually really lovely and helpful and I said to her can you like I you know instinctively you know I was like can you test my hormones I just feel so unwell and Mm. she was like we can't she said you're on the pill so I was like but I knew there was it was it was just so all the equilibrium was so messed up you can just feel it so I it's so nice to just feel normal and well but even but even to say that I feel well I mean what an Mm. amazing feeling especially as any woman who's had endometriosis or has it and you know we put ours into remission is it's like to feel well is such a gift it's such a joy and people who are not you know people who don't have endometriosis the, the other people they don't know what it's like to be suffering mm. for almost two decades that you I know but the thing is I think um there are lots of different um I think endometriosis where if you catch it from the xeno or don't you don't catch it but if you develop it from the xenoestrogens later on in life because I know some other people with endometriosis and they're not they, they they say to me oh my god I hope I can never you know if I ever as am as ill as you like they yeah. they are okay meaning they can eat quite a normal diet normal meaning gluten and dairy and all the things that everyone usually eats and they're not as ill but then there are other people like myself who were and you we were so ill and literally bedridden so I think there's just levels of different levels of it as we know it affects people differently doesn't it and well, I've, I've since since writing the book, I've kind of discovered like what I refer to now as the five P's or the five poisons. You know, mm-hmm. we've got produce, which is food. We've got products, which is your know, uh, personal or household products. We've got property, people and past. And it's the mm-hmm. last two that when women are still having little, you know, little, little eeks and little gremlins and, and maybe a bit of lack of energy or there's just little things, then normally that's when actually my next book is, I'm still doing it, embracing Mm. emotions, empathy and energy because Mm. it's those key components. So some people might be okay because maybe they're, you know, from an emotional perspective, maybe everything's okay. They're maybe not under stress. So they're not producing as much cortisol and things like that. And they may have not had a terrible past. They may have just from foods and things having these endome- low level endometriosis symptoms, you know? Yeah. But people like yourself who've had maybe had, I mean, you, you touched on your, your upbringing, you've identified it as very traumatic and, and you're being very stoic again about it. And you're being kind of like, oh, it was traumatic. These things reside in your nervous system. Mm. And again, I had a very similar upbringing. It was, I didn't know it was traumatic. Yeah, same. <laughs> I didn't know it had that label. I just thought that was normal. Yes. I thought it was abnormal normal, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It was just kind of like, that's just how dysfunctional our family were. And that's just how life was. I didn't mm. know that it caused all this uh, upset in the nervous system and, and the and midbrain, uh, reptilian brain you know, the uh, adrenal gland. I didn't know all these things. So mm. I've since kind of, I mean, I keep going on learning because I, I'm at that kind of, I can't get enough knowledge now mm. because our, our bodies and our brains are just phenomenal. So maybe, I mean, if you're comfortable, don't feel that you have to, but you have touched on, mm. on your, um, your upbringing. If you feel mm. comfortable, how do you feel that that manifested itself in your body as well in your journey? Oh, it's just, um, it's funny because looking back, I mean, even just to touch on your podcasts where I have, and I've not been known as a crier. I'm, you know, I'm not probably, it's because I know it's because to do with my past, I've been a very stone, you know, like a stone person growing, you know, people have commented to say to me, you know, are you a stone or something? Um, And that's because of our past. And I've literally over this last year and a half there are I listened to all of your podcasts and there have been a couple of your podcasts and there was a particular one where you opened up about your childhood and narcissism and things like that and I literally sat there I cried and cried I was literally in my house on my own it was really funny <laughs> it's like if I if someone was videoing me they would be like does she need help I was literally just crying I was sobbing but it wasn't sad tears it was relief because it was I relate to this. Yes, it's it's not just me. It's not just what's happened to me. This is obviously, it it wasn't my fault. It was me realising none of this was my fault and sort of congratulating myself to say, oh my gosh, you've got yourself out of all of this now. And um, 
it, it it's the most freeing thing when you've realized that the way you may be or you think that is not the best way perhaps you've changed and why you've changed it and that there is such a point behind it and growing up i never had any idea i mean i knew things weren't right i knew things weren't right um but i didn't at all have any recognition of how it was affecting that's why my periods were so heavy i realize now through the scientific thing through all the research and podcasts that i've listened to that my progesterone was so low because my cortisol was so high constantly and you know you spoke about in one of your podcasts as well about that um that a child living in fear even just hearing the front door go because someone's come home and you're just like oh, you know what's gonna how's this evening gonna pan out and it's so I so relate to it and yeah it's I only realized this last year um I actually didn't know you'd done EMDR therapy funny enough I actually only learned that after I started it myself and how I came across it there was a certain I don't know if I'm allowed to say name she's a, a news broadcaster um who, on, from TV and she had a traumatic event happen to her something that you know went wrong one day nothing to do with her childhood and she mentioned that her and her family had been doing EMDR therapy um and it's to do with you know going back uh, to recognize uh, and work on you know um trauma that's happened to you and i thought oh I like that sounds quite apt to me because i was on a really good path you know i was having reflexology doing the the massages and stuff and really t taking care of myself doing yoga oh love yoga and so I found a therapist here where I live and oh my god it was the best thing ever yeah. I literally went into her office thinking it's gonna be you know it's gonna be all right I might cry a bit and how embarrassed I thought of the, the prospect of crying a bit and the first thing she said to me was I want you to tell me about your safe place and I I can talk about my husband till I'm blue in the face because he is my safe place but she said no it can't be your husband she said it's got to be something other than your husband and I broke down I was sobbing and sobbing because there was no safe place literally there was nowhere and I was thinking I was trying to think of something and I was like I can't there was nowhere but literally nowhere and we we weren't around family growing up either so it was literally just that house that I knew and so I was oh I was emotional. Oh my God. I'd go to my car after the therapy. It was, I'd look in the mirror. <laughs> my eyes would literally just be like, I'd laugh. I just start laughing when I, I looked at myself. I was like, I can't believe I just sat in front of someone and got that emotional. Um, but luckily, you know, it's helped me so much. And I knew just from looking at photos of the therapists and reading their biography, who I'd feel comfortable with. And I felt really comfortable with my, the one that I encountered. She's lovely. And she's helped me so much and I, I just can't believe like it's a constant thing that's happening I did about 16 sessions and I've meant to go back but haven't yet and I wanted to now recently and then obviously all this happened and I don't really feel comfortable doing it online so I'll go back when I can but she's helped me through so much I and mean, even my birthdays every birthday I'd sob and sob and I realized it's those conditions of worth I never felt valued enough and I never felt good enough to be celebrated on my birthday but on the outside to everyone I'm a very confident person very I'm together a, very, very professional got it all sorted oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> and how and how do you how do you I mean for those who don't know what EMDR is it's eye mm. movement desensitization mm. and processing it basically what it does it's a form it's a non-talking therapy and it basically what it does is it helps people with their eye movements it's what you what refer back to is rem sleep rapid eye movement sleep so when you're in your sleep then your brain your amazing brain is starting to process and file away what's happened in the day but if there's mm. been trauma it gets stored in its original format and might get re-triggered by a sight or a smell or a sound or something mm. your nervous system is constantly reliving it so how do you how do you feel um in your body i mean because equally it's a very exhausting process because it's so powerful mm. and again to those who are listening you could make sure you know as, as sarah's done to interview various people and go very slowly with it because if you've even got an inkling that something wasn't right growing up and we're not here to blame mm. or bash parents 
than the chest. No, no. You were probably, you're probably right. And it might be mid brain, i.e. below your level of consciousness. So it keeps getting reactivated in your body. So how have you found Sarah? It kind of, how, how physically has it improved? Oh my gosh, just, oh, it's so like, I'm sorry, I sound ridiculous going, oh, but it, it's amazing. Um, where I'd usually react to certain things very negatively and this oh, anger would boil up inside of me and I, I would just negative, negative, negative. I'm not like that anymore. Like someone will say something to me and I'll just, it's funny because I used to think people were weak if they didn't, you know, have something, but I, they're really not. They're the ones that are stronger. I will now just process what they've said and I'll just, I now can see through the other end and say, you know what, this is not worth my time. I'm just going to let it either go or I, it just doesn't bother me the way it used to. Things used to bother me so badly and it is, it's, it's been letting it all out. And I know it's not a very verbal thing, EMDR, but it, it was for me. I, I had. <laughs> well, no, but I think that that's great. I think what, what I, I mean, I think it's great that you got from it what you needed. And it sounds like you've got an excellent counselor who was able to, to, um, uh, specialize it modelize it round what you needed for me I'd done so much talking therapy before and I just thought I know my stuff like the back yeah. of my hand and it ain't helping me I need to get past my my conscious yeah. mind into 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 that midbrain and yeah. really feel it because I'd got um, my endometriosis symptoms and endometriosis system I've got that in remission in about seven or eight months but I still had this chronic fatigue and I couldn't figure it out. Mm. So I'm so pleased that you found that because EMDR is very, is, is very powerful. Mm. I mean, I, I saw, had to see my counselor for about maybe three or four years mm. before I could get into the deeper stuff of things yeah. showing up in my body. But mm. it's phenomenal that I, cause I can already hear that, you know, with obviously taking back power and control, reading the book, you know, really tuning into your instincts, there's this new sense of worth coming out. And mm. it's like, as you're even discussing like other people, you're this observer of yourself now, rather mm. than you're not the thoughts, you're not the feelings, you're observing mm. them and deciding whether or not actually that person's just an idiot. It's not worth even it's responding worth to. Whereas yeah. before our upbringing would have conditioned us to be on guard all the time. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We're a, we're a product of our upbringing, and we're trying to separate from that because our body shows up or is showing up, you know, the ills of the past, if you like. No, no, oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's funny because now when I speak to certain people, I that I'm not as close to anymore that I made that conscious decision for my health, and when I speak to them, it's it's amazing. It's like I'm looking back at who I used to be um because yes that's who I had become because that's all I was around and exactly. I look back and I, I've it's funny because I mean I've gone through so much in my life of this guilt and needing to protect and I just have to I've just had to let it all go and I'm just I've got to do me I can only control me and I'm I just feel blessed I feel blessed that I've found such a lovely husband and because my path wasn't that easy to find in him I unfortunately encountered some uh, not not the best exes some, or some foul, toxic individuals. Yes, <laughs> um, but I I do believe I needed to be on that journey. Um, also, for me now to be on the path that I'm on now, because I may not have appreciated. I didn't know how to appreciate someone so wonderful, um, and it's. But it, it sounds like you wouldn't have thought you were deserving of it because exactly. of upbringing. And whereas now, like you said, you're on self sabotage, which was great perception and insight of yourself. But now you recognize your worth. And that's. Yeah, so I do. I really do. And even now, when we talk about things to do for my birthday, it's hard for some, not some reason. I know why. When it comes to birthdays, you know. Uh, many um, of the occasions whether it be Christmas birthdays or anything that had to be celebrated was even worse that day growing up whereas every day was terrible but those days were even worse so I think anytime my birthday comes around 
it all just comes out. Well, of course, no it's your my nervous system. Does. I mean, that's yeah. that you, you're conditioned. You just need to listen to, you know, but Pavlov's uh, dogs, you know, he conditioned dogs to salivate by ringing a bell. They would salivate when food was out and he would ring a bell. Then he would just remove the food and every time a bell rang, they would salivate. That's mm. like, that's the, the ultimate conditioning. So no yeah. wonder every time, even the name birthday. Yes. You no, know, even Thank that you word mean. birthday, you, yeah. you get a natural contraction. I mean, you said mm. right at the beginning how you were you were tense and you know and how everything was you, you didn't realize how tense you were until you start mm -hmm. to relax no wonder you love yoga now because oh, yoga is best. it's getting oxygen into your into your lungs and it's allowing you to move in, yeah. in actually a beautiful way with your body rather than yeah. the gym which is like beating your body yeah no definitely yeah. i've cut i mean i used to do the gym three four days a week and heavy now i might do it once a week and not as heavy at all and i'll do yoga um, the other days and it's also um, I've been so tense in my stomach area where I think because I've been like that my whole life through the stress and anxiety that I had to really is it the psoas muscle I think I had to stretch through doing that oh, I'm so much more flexible it's amazing and sort of releasing all of the trauma from that area because I didn't realize no surprises that we hold a lot of trauma in that area in in the reproductive area and yeah. um it may it all makes so much sense literally it just so much sense Absolutely. yeah it all makes it through this journey and it was it was your book that instigated all of it it's just oh, fantastic. it's like these moments where you're like oh my gosh i get it now i get it and yeah. it's, it's just amazing it's it's absolutely amazing it's, what, what would you no, say, I say anyone who hasn't read the book what what would be your kind of parting words and inspirational words because clearly I, you know it may it fills up my heart so much to know that not my journey hasn't been in vain and that but be able to share my journey in a book and that you've been able to read it has put you on this pathway to where you are now mm. it just fills me up with so much joy for you yeah. you know that it's all been worth it so what would be your parting inspirational words to, to women if they're listening to this oh just please please just please if you think you've got any issues you know with your periods and it might not be the um you've got endometriosis but the way that you feel on the pill you just feel like a zombie you don't feel right but you don't know it until you come off it and yeah. it's it's so unfair for women to have to go through all of this stuff it's it's so unfair that they have to even just to be on the pill you know just to it's, it's a shame that it's so it messes up so much in their body you know even the gut health it it can really impair the gut health later on you know if you've been having it for quite a while so please read the book it's you i mean you do such a great thing where it's a free book as well isn't it you just yes. have to pay for the postage so mm. please read the book and just enlighten yourself on just small things you of pumping yourself full of the, even but, just wheat as you know my one of my my pages is no wheat no wheat no yeah. wheat, no wheat, no wheat, because that is it, it the wheat's in everything and yeah. just talking about gut health invariably you know you mentioned all the tramadol and all the different drugs and painkillers you were on they cause havoc and mm. inflammation to the intestinal tract which yeah. you know your your health is only as good as what you're absorbing and most people try to eat really healthily but their digestive tract is impaired because mm. of all these years on things so um, wheat, even just wheat on its own, that sounds so simple. Just swapping yeah. that out can make a big difference. But well, do you know what? Because of your book, um, my husband, it's taken a long time, but he now eats as I eat, and he feels so well. The Ooh. minute he and he he grew up on like meat, like loads of meat, and you know everything like gluten and dairy, and he the minute he goes back and has something, he feels unwell straight away, mm -hmm. and he just loves eating like this now he loves incorporating all this good food into his he feels well and you can't beat that can you so even my no, sister yeah, yeah she amazing. she's also now eats as i do and she's a lot better too a lot better so no it's it's been phenomenal and thank you so much for putting that out there because god knows where i'd be now if i hadn't uh if I hadn't come across that book and yeah and you know but full credit to you you read the book you've implemented it and you're a living testament to mm. what can be done so I'm really proud of you and thank you so much thank for you for coming on and sharing your story today now we're going to have a chat privately in a minute so I'm going to just sum up before I sure. call 
the recording button. But just to say, Sarah, thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. And if you are listening to this and you've not read my book, why not? I even give it for free. So you can get a free paperback copy. Again, please note that because of the COVID crisis, some deliveries to some countries are being affected. But if, um, if, if your country is affected, we'll get back to you as soon as and offer you an alternative. But you can go to Heal Endometriosis Naturally book.com and just pay shipping and handling and we do ship all over the world again assuming that the covid doesn't interfere with that but thank you so much sarah i'm going to pause thank you. now thanks for listening to heal endometriosis naturally with wendy k laidlaw and i hope you enjoyed the show don't forget to subscribe like and rate us if you're interested in learning more you can download your top five jump start tips at heal endometriosis naturally.com and jump on the vip email list Remember to keep you number one for the world needs a healthy you.